Thanks to your generous donations to our Kickstarter funding campaign. Clive Barker Podcast presents Fundraiser 6, Bill Seeker. So this is Maximilian Francis Benoit, my dears. Are you all ready? Yeah. Ready, willing, and able. <laughs> all right. So yeah, welcome. This is episode 212 of the Clive Barker podcast. And uh, I'm Ryan. And I'm Jose. I'm Rob. And we have a and special... I'm Lori the fangirl. <laughs> yes, we have a special yeah. guest, Lori Markle Boucher from, uh, from Simon Bamford Fans. And so, Lori, we were talking a little bit ago. Um, I said, you know, I've seen this five t- about five times now. And you, <laughs> how many times did you say you've seen this? I, I told you that I gave up counting at 167. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I've seen this five times. I've only seen it twice. Oh, <laughs> well, and that, that's not including when they put the promo up either. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got uh, – I thought about making popcorn to watch the commentary track with some popcorn, but then I thought better of it because I don't want to have the chewing noise, like, disturb anybody who might not like chewing noise. Oh, so I'm yeah. just yes. – I grabbed myself a little beer, a little brewski. I got my glass of water right here. I got – I hope everybody listening to this has their um, – Episode one of the offer, Dark Ditties. It's available on Amazon Prime uh, if you have it. Um, and I got it lined up at zero seconds and paused. So. Yeah, yeah. And and if you're like me, so my my Amazon Prime seems to run previews. So get yourself to the epilepsy warning at the beginning of the at the beginning of the offer, and then you'll be at the same place as us, and you'll be ready for the countdown. That's right. Uh, I think Lori should do the countdown. If all right, get- yeah. Nothing. That'd be only All fitting. right. Everybody ready? Yeah. I am ready. All right. Three, two, one, unpause. Here we go. And this warning is actually true. The image, the scene that this happens in, it really did affect my eyes. Oh, oh. is it like when the lights go out and the, and the, like, yeah, the chainsaw that kind of stuff and stuff really like that? Yeah. So that's, that's a, um, Reeves B. That's a lovely, yeah. The Reeves B. Abbey, right, yeah. Lori? That's right. It was founded in 1142 by William de Romara, Lord of Bolingbroke. And I have to say a little trivia here. A certain Bolingbroke is named in the Hellbound Heart. Um, uh, he's one of the people that uh, had some diaries that Frank and uh, Kircher spent long nights talking of hints gleaned from the oh, diaries wow. of Bolingbroke and Shield Array. So I don't know if there's any connection because this is from the lord of bolingbroke but i just thought it was a wow. bit of trivia I, it, i'm sure it probably is i Maybe just want to mention I, I just want to mention when the graphic came up for the title when simon told me that there were hammer elements to this that, that just brought me back and i just love that it's a great graphic and they've been doing that grindhouse intro in all the other uh, dark ditties episodes Of course, if you remember Frank the Monster from Hellraiser, he was played by Oliver Smith, who plays yeah. the butler. And also Mr. Browning in Hellbound, who uh, the get him off me guy. Get him off me! <laughs> yeah. He's got a, such a, a suave, smooth, gravelly yeah. voice, doesn't he? Yeah. And John Castle was originally <laughs> uh, cast as Barnabas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He uh, played. Uh, what, what did he play in? He, I saw him in RoboCop Three. He played the bad cop. Oh in really? That. Yeah. I mean, he's done other stuff, but that's the only thing I can remember him from. Um, yeah, I'm having. Try, I'll have to look him up. I can't think of who that is. I think I only saw RoboCop Three one time when it came out. Yeah, like, it's, oh. yeah, it's not very good. As did we all. Yeah. It's not missing much. <laughs> yeah. You told me your ninja. Here's a could great kill reveal. Here's the great reveal of the 
cast. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of like a Hellraiser reunion right here. Yeah, it was it was amazing when this came out. I thought this was going to be a, like a one time thing. I had no idea this was going to be part of a larger story, which is is, is even better. This is a well, this, this long protracted joke of his of like acting like she's a stripper or something is is uh-huh. really uh, really uh, cringy, <laughs> right? It's, and it's, I, go ahead. <laughs> go no, go ahead. I was I was just going to point out for for all the the lady fans out there who are wondering about those uh, the footwear of uh, that Barbie's wearing. They're not boots. They're actually shoes. I asked her. Oh really? And, uh, if you thought they were boots, you're in good company because the Saskas <laughs> thought the exact same thing. So, oh, wow. I actually have the brand name. <laughs> so seven strangers are invited to hear an inheritance at a remote location in the UK. All have no idea who and why their benefactor has invited them. However, when they arrive at the house, the fun and excitement of potentially winning 10 million pounds soon turns to horror as each of the guests is disposed of in a gory and horrific fan. Yeah. So really, what is the offer and who is the host, right? So that's yeah. the whole point of this. I've got a little trivia here, too. Um, Gary, let me know that uh, Bishop was originally called Roger and Rose was originally called Julia. Oh, nice. I wonder if there was a, a link to Julia Cotton from Hellraiser. Yeah. yeah. Bruce somebody, Jones so, is so, just yeah, somebody is kind of loud. I mean, I don't know. Is it maybe Rob? Is it yours? All right, calm down, calm yeah. down. Is that better? Yeah, uh, yeah. So that is Darnell. Uh, let me see if Spence. I get the notes right. Spence, Spence. that's right. Plays yeah. Daniel Price, mm-hmm. and Bruce Jones plays Bishop, and uh, he just completely chews the scenery throughout the entire <laughs> yeah. episode. Yeah. Yes. Bishop <laughs> is the only person I would have a beer with. I don't drink beer, and don't hate me for that, but he, I would. I'll okay. drink another one for you. Okay, deal. I love that bloody yank. I'm Canadian, honey. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I'm going to murder this, but um, Simon told me what the hors d'oeuvres were that they were eating. I don't oh. speak French, so I'm going to murder this pronunciation, and Simon is eventually going to tell me that my French is by way of Romania, but volavant. <laughs> okay. I, so. Oh. I, oh, and there's the uh, suit that launched oh. a thousand ovarian explosions. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. He I love the thing the, he does with his little calling card. The card flip. He didn't do that for me that. in Chicago, unfortunately. <laughs> he just handed it to me. Yeah. So I flipped it back at him. <laughs> I said, did you say do it again? Do it right. <laughs> Look at the soft, off-white coloring. My God, <laughs> it even has a watermark. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's uh, American Psycho. Yeah. <laughs> So this this whole uh, Abbey, I was going to say in the beginning that uh, they do ghost hunting in this place as well. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. They have some events that they uh, they call it ghost hunting. So they, they go there and they, uh, they, they do that sort of stuff. I mean, it's a pretty scary place. It was in ruins for a while, and then it was rebuilt in the 1800s. And then these guys spilled fake blood all over the floor. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So Gemma Gordon plays Gabrielle Sanderson, and um, of course Barbie Wilde plays Rose Cavendish. Uh, Nicholas Vince over there, he plays Sebastian Maurice. And let's see, oh yeah, St- uh, Stanley Rollins, who has been in uh, the other two episodes uh, of The Dark Deities. He does a great job in this one as Derek Cartwright. Yeah. It's funny that this is this was the first narrative film by Cult Screenings UK after their successful documentary of Leviathan, the story of Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Yeah. 
Uh, and uh, you guys got to watch. I don't know if you watched this before, but uh, the You're So Cool Brewster documentary, the story oh, of Fright yes. Night. Oh, yes. Uh, Simon Banford, he plays the vampire hunter, right? Uh, what was the name of the character, Laurie? Peter Vincent, the great <laughs> vampire killer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Simon uh, and Vincent, Nicholas Vince also plays a vampire in a fake trailer in that documentary as well. Count Vlad. So at, at this point yeah, in, the, in, right. the, in the movie, I wonder what would really happen to the people who decided to, uh, to not do it. You know, if they say, okay, yeah, I'll go get in the car and go to the hotel. Would they hmm. would they really let them go, or would they murder them? Ah, uh, that's probably murder them. Yeah, yeah. That's up for the audience to decide. Yeah, just like at the end. And of course, this is going to be full of spoilers. So if anybody's listening to this and you've never seen it before, I recommend that you stop this, go watch it, and then watch it with the commentary track. Yeah, and if you have Amazon Prime, it's free, so you can watch it as many times as you want. Right. Ken Cranham, <laughs> Dr. Shenard. <laughs> yeah. I recommend amputation. So, Laurie, you've cosplayed li as the nurse that's behind in that shot right there, <laughs> yeah. right? I cosplayed as the nurse, uh, played by Siobhan Kilmartin. And actually, here's another little bit of trivia. Um, Emmy was actually asked to be the nurse at first. Oh, wow. Imogen. Yeah, Borman. Mm-hmm. Oh. Imogen Borman, Tiffany in Hellraiser 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would have been something. Her right next to Ken Cranham, that would have been amazing. I know, right? I'm, I'm happy with it, though. Sure. So she is Annie, uh, or Anne uh, Wiltshire, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. Ah, yes. oh, the nurse, right, right. Because yeah. there's, a, there's a scene uh, in the second episode where there was a phone call and we find out that that was her. Yeah. And she, was, she was saying, I'm on the phone, Max, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So not being an economist or a banker, I had to look up what futures are. And futures, for those who don't know, are just basically financial contracts that uh, obligate the buyer to purchase an asset or the seller to sell an asset, such as physical commodity or financial instrument, at a predetermined future date and price. So that, that's why I'm poor, because I don't <laughs> do futures. Yeah. <laughs> So I, the other thing I noticed here the, every time I've watched this is that he says, one of you will lose a life. And they all glossed over it. No, but not one person said, wait a minute, lose a life. Yeah, I guess they think it's like a, a game life. We're like, yeah. oh, okay, so yeah. probably we'll lose a point or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Or we'll be, like, knocked out of the competition. He brings in a good point, like, why don't we all work together and then we share it? But it's like, there's really no work in this because they don't know what the game is so far, yeah. so that wouldn't make any sense anyway. Yeah. Bloody hell, he speaks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he speaks a lot in the third episode. He, he turns out to be one of the worst characters in this whole uh, in this whole episode yeah. Yeah, it's always the quiet ones yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, last week on January 12th this was actually screened at the Horror on Sea Film Festival and they had a panel with Chris Griffiths and Gary Smart I think this movie did make um, did win some awards uh, as it was screened in uh, various movie festivals cool yeah, and this this is a is a lot older than or a, a little older than um, than uh, than its Amazon Prime appearance because this was crowdfunded and then and then screened in in um, festivals and and uh, and did did Lori you probably were in the crowdfunding for the offer right? Actually, I was not. Oh, okay. I was wondering if they gave out DVDs or Blu-rays of this. I can't remember. And without any sort of, uh, I'm not trying to damn the first episode with faint praise, but they do get 
I, I feel like every episode of the uh, of the Dark Ditties that's come out has become better technically and story wise, and uh, it's just amazing to see how how they've been evolving in the making each episode of the Dark Ditties. Yeah. Well, it's also a smaller cast. This is the biggest cast out of all of them. You know, all these people in the room at one time. Right. Right. So they could be a little more um, intimate, I think. Mm hmm. Of course, I guess that problem takes care of itself over the course of this this episode. Since they here come the rules. Killed. Yeah. So the envelope right next to the volavant. <laughs> I just love how Siobhan <laughs> Kill Martin just always looks bored. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, whole she's show. Like, yeah. Well, not the whole show, but most of the show, she looks bored. Yeah. Am I crazy or is she in one of the final shots when we see all the revelers of the offer with their champagne glasses and weird masks? You are not crazy. She is one of the masked guests. Oh, and there we go. When, wow. when we get to that scene, I have a bit of trivia for that, too. Okay. But I'm going to wait nice. on that. Unfortunately, since we're doing a commentary, we can't pause it. I wish we could, especially in the credits with the newspaper articles. So if if I were Maximilian Francis Benoit, I would pretend that I had a, a, a fatal disease that didn't make me cough all the time. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> Easter egg. Easter egg in the back there. Oh, There's a is... lament configuration on the oh, mantle. Dang it. Oh, I see it. Wow, that is yeah, that's uh, really subtle, isn't it? Nice. Uh, I didn't catch that any wow. of the times that I watch it. No, this is my first time seeing it too. I know they mentioned it when we talked to them, but I still never saw it. It's kind of blurry too. If you look so, really closely at some of the pictures, not only in this episode, but also in Mrs. Wiltshire, um, it's photoshopped of, of the cast, oh. the different people in the pictures. Like, oh, the, like ah. the, picture, the picture behind Benoit is uh, him and the bastard. Is that Denny? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who uh, is, plays like his nephew or something? Son. Oh, son, son. Yeah, bastard, yeah. And I love that the um, Mr. Benoit's uh, family crest is not only shown in the screen, but it's also in the back of each card. Well, I had a question about that, and and because um, I when when I first seen the promo, because I, I study symbology and everything like that, and you know, two of the symbols I knew what they meant, and the two at the bottom, I don't have any clue what they mean and mm. so i had i had simon ask and and i was just told that um he's a crazy bugger <laughs> so <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> he seems pretty grounded on episode three but no more no more spoilers there so th this is where it starts um uh, getting messy and yeah. uh at the time i was like I wish that we could see a little bit of it, that it wasn't just completely dark, that we could see a little bit of yeah. like shapes or whatever just swirling around. It made it more interesting, you know. But they they do uh, they do soften up on that a little bit in later murders. It's just this right, first one right. with Rose. They don't. Yeah, but you kind of wonder what exactly do they do? They knife her? Or what do they do to her? Maybe machete cut her throat or something yeah i was thinking yeah. that especially since barbie played her you know with the female cenobite oh, with the neck oh yeah because I, I could just kind of hear that you know the choking it, and the gurgling yeah yeah i thought it was also interesting that uh that uh, nicholas vince's character said he'd spilled his champagne all over his shirt and it soaked through and then when the lights come on it's like no it's not champagne it was blood it's blood God, how warm was that champagne? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that uh, Bishop is wearing his, uh, a blazer with like a Hawaiian shirt with flamingos. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have a little bit of trivia about the shirt, too. Oh, yeah? Um, oh, great. Yeah. I, hear that. I, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I should share it right now because it actually has it makes more sense later on in the episode. Oh, okay. Okay. You, want, you want me to share it now or wait? 
yeah, let's do it. I yeah. mean, this is a spoiler, spoilery kind of commentary track. Yeah. Okay. Uh, towards the end of the episode, um, when uh, when Bishop is holding the door shut, uh, that's actually Gary Smart in that shirt. And, oh. And you know, I always wondered because he had shared a behind-the-scenes picture of himself in Bishop's costume. And I always wondered about that. I mean, why was he wearing Bishop's costume? I thought, you know, well, maybe it's just Gary. He's making a bold fashion statement or something. But no, there was actually <laughs> a reason for it. So here's the whole case. At the end of the episode, you see these little newspaper clippings where they go more in depth about what each of the guests did. And Rose Cavendish, um, she didn't pay attention to safety regulations, and she ended up with an accident at the Hudson Bay in Canada. Uh, she had a refinery that left 16 dead and hundreds injured, as well as lots of crude oil going into the Hudson Bay, costing $4 billion worth of cleanup costs. And she was found guilty of manslaughter and malpractice. So, yeah, so did she end up going to jail? Or, I mean, why is she in England now? That, you know, maybe she got away with it because she was rich. I'm not yeah. sure. It doesn't say that in the fake uh, newspaper clipping, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's a Polanski thing, you know, flee the country. Yeah, right, right. maybe. Right. Yeah. So, in this one, I don't remember what is the card for this one because they didn't actually draw, right? This was, oh, it was Sloth, I think, wasn't it? We're, we're not up to Sloth yet. Oh, okay. We're still on greed. And with each death, it gets more gruesome, right? They seem to up the ante with the yeah, deaths. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about this is when we talked to Gary and, the, and all the other people from Dark Titties, I remember you asked something about it, Ryan. You said, so was there a right answer for any of these things? And they basically said, mm, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, well, they would always, like, get someone killed. It's totally unfair to say, no, he's not greed. He's lust for money. It's like, what? That's the same thing. Because I think that the point is that this is done for entertainment, so we'll find more about that at the end. But yeah. it's like this is the entertainment part is actually the guests scrambling and fighting and turning on each other. That's the show. Yeah. This that's, this part right here reminds see. me of Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's, right, right, yeah, with the night vision. The butterflies. Uh -huh. So is this from the uh, from the, the Beast's point of view? Is he wearing, like, night vision goggles or something? Yes, and actually yeah. the Beast has two masks. He has one with goggles and one with a visor. So this oh. is probably the one with the goggles. Wow. The Beast played by Ray Screamer, right? Schemer. Schemer. Oh, shit, this is real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so D Daniel was sloth, right? Yes. Yeah. And there's Jonathan's fabli fabulous watch. <laughs> yeah. On his right wrist. I oh. yelled at him about that. Because hey, he's I... a righty. Oh, he is. I wear a watch <laughs> yeah, on the right and, hand. Yeah, and if, if you've ever worn your watch on the wrong wrist, you know, it's kind of like yoga or contortionism to try to sign your name. Oh, and I was like, yeah. And I asked Gary, why, why is it on his right wrist? And he's like, I don't know, ask Simon. So I asked Simon, and Simon's like, it just felt right. So. Oh, wow. So it may be, um, maybe JBD is left-handed? Well, he is evil. So. <laughs> hey, I'm left-handed. <laughs> You're evil. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> But I love you. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, Daniel Price played Darnell Spence, and he belonged to the Valiant House Gang who sold drugs and organized raves. So he was accused of selling cocaine to partygoers of the Dominion nightclub, and two teenagers were later found dead due to the cocaine being cut with a street drug Skywalker. Um, might be a Star Wars reference there. Uh, a legal high, uh, Skywalker, unfortunately, was also used in rat poison. Oh. So... Is, is was that? Did you get that out of the newspaper article? At the, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did lots of pausing and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Yeah, that's so gross, right there. Oh, oh my god. god. But you know, with all those articles, I I really have to give them props. They went in and you know a lot of movies 
when you see a, a newspaper article or something, you'll you'll actually pause it and read it, and it has something to do with cows or you know Special Olympics or just yeah. something that has nothing to do yeah. with what you're reading. Yeah. But yeah. they actually went in and wrote every one of those articles, and you know just props to them. That's cool. Who you did that? And Hellbound. I think mm-hmm. Neil did. Although okay. uh, although the one for I mean isn't it kind of isn't it considered racist to to call black people thugs? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it said thug right in the in the um in the headline of the article. Right. Uh, it's just meant to be like uh you know, uh those tabloid articles so yeah. that kind of makes <laughs> Yeah. I have to say though that I missed a uh, I missed a joke that I wanted to bring up, which is when Oliver Smith, the butler, tells people, "Would you like to leave or remain?" And this was done around the time when the Brexit uh, oh. referendum happened. Oh, I see. <laughs> so I wonder if that was a reference to Brexit, because uh, it was the leave and remain side. Yeah. So, <clears throat> right. That's kind of backwards, though. <laughs> If if they would have left, they might not have died. <laughs> right. Mm. That's very true. Envy. Yeah. So we're coming up on the most gruesome death so far. You know, I think one part of this is that nobody wants to be honest about what their real most horrible thing is. I mean, and it should be obvious to everybody, you know. Right. But he's he's gonna he's gonna go on and on about how he's envious when you know his real thing is much worse. The thing is, this is a forced catharsis, right? I mean, these people—they're complete strangers, so they're just taking each other at face value but yeah. the whole nature of the game is to make them confess themselves in front of strangers yeah they they all confess to lesser crimes you know than their actual real crimes and they're on a time limit i i love it when nick says we're arguing over the price of a pair of fucking shoes i just love that <laughs> yeah. yeah and his voice what cracks you just can on. feel it yeah <laughs> happens more than you'd think I love yeah, that look she, on his face. She was a recurring theme in this series. And so, the, by that look on uh, on Nicholas Vince's face, he knows that it's him, but he won't say. He, he's he's basically <laughs> condemning himself to die rather than mm-hmm. con- confessing to his to his uh, crime. Yeah. Wrong answer. Yeah. It's funny because the, the background is usually kept uh, with a depth of field focus, so you don't really see what's in each painting, but now that Lori told us the Easter eggs, yeah, um, yeah, I wish I could see those paintings more clearly. <laughs> yeah. It should be funny. Yeah. But if I guess... Okay. If- I have to say something. Um, on behalf of the female fans, Ray Schemer's arms. That's all I have to say. No point. Just the Ray Schemer's <laughs> arms. That man is like two redwoods and a tr- and a torso. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is this is like the goriest scene in the whole movie. Almost, it's uh, when yeah. when Sebastian Maurice gets torn apart. Even yeah. the dog was traumatized. Right. I'm just, I'm just joking. That was just uh, <laughs> when we did the episode about the offer. We also talked about Hellraiser Judgment. And um, I think the little image we put as the cover for that episode was when uh, one of the some dog from like a meme and then Sebastian Maurice's <laughs> pile of body parts. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? The Beast is really, really efficient because he did all that in 30 seconds and got him in a tater sack. Yeah, so. yeah, right. yeah right. You go, boy. He's been doing it a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Just like those rodeo guys who can tire, tie up a steer in like 30 seconds. Shit. Does it seem like this isn't the first time they've done this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a show. So if you can have like two million pounds or whatever, then mm-hmm. you can have a seat and you can uh, you can bet on the show and stuff like that. So and we'll then, find out more about that. And I guess for less money, you can just watch it on the Internet. Oh, gross. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good... Those are some killer shoes, though, that he had. Those uh, are know. those called wingtips, like red wingtips oh. or whatever. I want the girl version of them. They're fabulous. Yeah. 
in his in his little cane. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having that cane. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why he was did the uh... oh sorry, no no go ahead. I was just going to ask Lori, who did the music for uh, this? Because the music for this was very well done. Sean Schaefer Hennessy. Okay. Yeah, that opening with the Abbey is really beautiful. So Sebastian Maurice died, and he was envy because he had a 28-year-old lover, uh, Ellison. Uh, they were in a relationship, and I believe that Ellison was a this understudy uh, for Tootsie. And then after Sebastian Maurice took a fall in his dressing room, his understudy boyfriend lover ended up taking over and he became a smash hit. And um, I forgot why, but then it said that his boyfriend committed suicide shortly after. So it, it makes us believe that Sebastian Maurice had something to do with that. Yeah, maybe he killed him and made it look like a suicide. Right. And uh, I also have a little bit of trivia about Sebastian's death. Uh, originally in the script, he was supposed to be drowned in a fish tank. What? <laughs> oh, that would have been something. Yeah. Wow. So then they would have had to have a, a big fish tank here in the room with them? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So was this actually inside the the Abbey building or was this yeah. like a set? Yeah, this so was this... inside because okay. oh, uh, Gary question. Gary had said that they didn't have any floors or ceilings, and they were very pleased that they got them finished before they actually started filming. Wow. I'll say. Yeah. No kidding. I love how Simon goes right to the scotch. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's, he does a great job of looking f totally freaked out through this this whole thing. Oh, 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 we're getting up. We're getting up to a part that I wanted to talk about okay. in just a second. Um, wait till, wait till he gets into it. Hang on. Here we go. That sounds familiar. Okay, right there. <laughs> Right, right there. As soon as he says, my only sin is not topping myself off sooner. Um, that look on Simon's face, on JBD's face. Mm -hmm. I, you, the first time you watch this episode, you probably don't catch it. At, because you ju probably just think he's just shocked because he was kind of casually mentioning suicide. Yeah. And then later on in the episode, you realize that that actually affected JBD in a way, too. Right. And I, I count that now Gary probably says I'm full of crap, but I count that as humanity and reality smacking JBD right between the eyes because right. suicide actually did touch him in his life because right. of his, his brother. brother. Yeah. And if you, oh, if you yeah. notice, I, I, when I start watching at this point, you kind of see JBD moving from being completely out for himself to right. kind of doing more things for the group. And oh, like wow. I said, Gary, Gary says, Gary says I'm wrong, but that's how I take it. No, I think your interpretation is absolutely smack on because it makes total sense. And, and his look on his face, the, the expression changing is so real, right? Mm -hmm. It's so genuine. Yeah. Ultimately, I think that uh, it's up for every audience member to interpret the, the movie in his own way. All those interpretations are valid, despite of what the author intended or not. You know, I, one thing I, I was thinking, if people could figure this out, but uh, they, they could, uh, they could beat, a person could beat this game just by naming themselves every single time, because then it would always be the wrong answer. And then they would, yes, then, then they would carve up the person who was the right answer. Uh, That's really true. Yeah. Of course, how, there's no way for them to know that, but. Oh, they, here we go. Uh, this is a tough, this is a hard death, too. It doesn't show much, but. Yeah. Just the machete through the head. I don't know. Oh, it's my just... God. <laughs> Smack. <laughs> yeah, I mean. This reminds uh, me, uh, you remember 8mm, the movie with yeah. Nicolas Cage? Yes, I do. You remember the guy who was called Machine? He was like yeah, the guy who did the snuff movie. Yeah, same kind of mask. Yeah. He had a knife and uh huh. Ah, oh, and he just drags him. Oh, so just, that yep. that shot of the blood on the floor looks a lot like the blood on the floor the in, the, in yeah, Hell Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Good point.
Yeah, yeah there's the puzzle box again back there. I'm still oh, not oh, the, where is North is so bored. It's in front of that <laughs> white book. Yeah, now the the last three people, like you said, JBD is going to work a lot more to get the right answers and help the group. I think that one of the things that I thought was a little out of character for what we're going to find out about the character is uh, Gabby. Yeah. Gabby didn't seem like she fit the story that is thrust upon her at the end. Yeah, I feel like yeah. she should have been a little more, I don't know, her personality should be a little more like... Snarky? Snarky, yes, thank yeah. you. Well, you've never been a teenage girl. <laughs> teenage girls, I can tell you right now, they're always good to the people on the outside. It's the people on the inside that they bully. Mm. Okay. So okay. that's that, that to me is completely believable because I was on the receiving end of the bullying. Of course, right. if, if... So she if plays she... the nice girl, but she's really not. But if she did that and somebody committed suicide, I don't know. You would think that would turn her life around, too. Eh, not necessarily. Yeah. Mm. You would like to. Jails are full of people that uh, did not turn their life around Yeah, with their bad choices. It would just, I, I yeah, I would just feel horrible. And Bruce Jones is also in Finders Keepers. He's also yeah. pretty funny in that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. He's along. He plays alongside uh, Smith too. Oliver Smith. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm missing out on not knowing uh, the work of some of these actors who have worked on British films and TV for decades. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny how on the so, the, the, the Amazon uh, Prime description it talks about how British this is. It's like a very British, you know, something or other. Of, uh, the, the, their description of the of the dark ditties. Yeah, there is a lot of. Um, so I'm watching this with subtitles on Amazon Prime, and actually some of the subtitles just say inaudible because they don't know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. You should have seen the subtitles on the promo. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> when it was on YouTube, the subtitles on the promo just kind of. Just shrugged and gave up when yeah. whenever Bishop was talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and actually, I have to admit that I don't quite understand all of his confession. Did did he? Yeah. How, how did he kill? And finders keepers was hard to understand too because uh, there was a lot of like <laughs> thick accents. Line. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did he kill his uh, his brother and his wife? He cut the brake line in the car. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's what I was so, missing. Mike Bishop of Bishop's Motors, his yeah. wife and brother were killed in a car accident outside yeah. of Manchester. Because they were having an affair <coughs> together. Yeah. And, and, uh, and she got pregnant with his brother's baby. Mm-hmm. And Derek Cartwright, um, his wife Amy was killed in a hit and run on Hearst Road, a known prostitute area, as she picked up takeaway for her family. He had two kids with her, a three and a seven year old, and Derek worked for the council housing department. His wife got pregnant when they were dating, and then they got married, and they had their first baby. And then you see the picture of his wife, and you know, she's like, they make her out to look like this obese lady, and mm. you know, and it's, it's hinted at that. Derek Cartwright was a guy who was always like going out to pick up prostitutes and yeah. then around that area on Hearst Road and he saw his wife and he ran her over and left her for dead. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's I feel that's like pretty horrible. Yeah, they could have they could have put more of this information in the in the movie in a more visual or dialogue kind of way instead yeah. of relying on the the final clippings in the end yeah. credits. Because those clippings are really hard to read. You have to really yeah. like make an effort to pause it and read yeah. it and yeah. use a magnifying glass and yeah. all that. Like Simpsons jokes. Right. You know, JBD just did the uh, five blokes hung like horses line. And 
again, going back to his uh, <laughs> little his little character arc there, um, immediately after he says no offense. So he kind of sort of apologized. So yeah. I mean, like I said, you're you're seeing a little progression of yeah. towards being mm. becoming a real mm -hmm. boy. Yeah. What I think is hilarious throughout the entire film is that even though he doesn't have his phone anymore, he still has the Bluetooth earpiece <laughs> yeah. in his ear the whole time. Yeah. This is, I bet it's as dead as our Canadian friend. Yeah. I'm a Jeffa. So Jeffa apparently is also a term used in um, um, cricket. Someone who makes a, a professional who makes a mistake or something, they call him a Jeffa. Yeah. And here, as uh, Jonathan is getting ready to leave the room, uh, Neil is actually standing in for the beast. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Don't turn your back on them. Ah. Yeah, never do that in a war movie. <laughs> yeah. Hi, oh. You no, must stay not in here. my poor baby. No. Oh. Aww. Lori's. That's the word. I thought about you when he got killed, Lori. I was like, I bet you I'm cried. putting my fingers in my ears and saying la 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 and imagining <laughs> him eating hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The character there with Oliver Smith is a, a, fr a friend of the podcast, uh, Danny Stewart. He's playing the yeah. gimp. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, the uh, masked people there, uh, Gary told me that they don't actually exist. They're actually ghosts. What? Oh, what? I'm not sure how that works in, but that's what he told me. I thought that That's they were cool. they were bidders on the That's internet. That's what I thought yeah. too. Are they like ghosts? Oh, like but one of them seems to have like gashes on his face, and I know that's a mask. Never mind. So ghosts. Oh. So I'm sure there will be an episode at some point where we learn about what happened to that uh, bastard Benoit to become the little yeah. monster that we see here. Uh huh. Yeah. You will. And hopefully, we'll find out if Gabby survived. He wears the chains he forged in life. Isn't <laughs> yeah. that from Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas yes. Carol? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, describing Marley. Marley, Scrooge's uh, partner. And of course, Simon Banford, he uh, convinces 48-year-old brother Dennis uh, Brooke Davis to sell everything to get into the deal of a lifetime with JBD. A future scheme yeah. left him with nothing and he had ended up hanging himself in his garage. So he tricked his own brother yeah. out of his life savings. Pretty horrible. And then and in the There's actual... Gary. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I think Ken Cranham's voice has become very well groomed by decades of smoking and drinking whiskey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he sounds like he's really making an effort to speak in this movie, but in Finders Keepers, he actually is a, a much more casual um, sounding yeah. uh, guy. Kind of a mobster, but you know, I mean, I, I, I first saw him, of course, in Hellbound, and then I've seen him in all sorts of movies throughout, you know, uh, the decades. One of them being Layer Cake, when I think he uh, co-starred in the movie uh, with Daniel Craig and other people. And then what else did I see with him? Yeah, there's there's a there's a few other movies. I think. Which one? Rome, the TV series Rome, that HBO. Slate. Oh yes, yes, he played like a senator or something, yeah. right? Yeah. I like this little moment they do where they um, they they try to make it seem like she got hit by him, but it was the other way around. Uh huh. He's clutching the owl like he's ready to hit her with it. And that owl is going to show up in uh, the next two episodes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll learn about the symbology of the owl. I'm curious to know more about the cult of what's it called? Let me see. The risen cult the, of the risen. The word. risen word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. Because all it of the stories a... sort of take place in the peripheral of the cult of the risen word, but you don't actually learn about it yet. Maybe it has to it's do coming. with the it's coming. witching I hour. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. 
Is that the witching hour? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's like Band on the Run is the next one after that? Uh, yeah, I think that's what Gary said. Yeah. That's the title of a song by Paul McCartney's <laughs> solo album, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah Wings. Wings. Yeah. Band on the Run. Yeah. Yep. And this is the story of Bishop. The Arthur Daly of Manchester, whoever Arthur Daly is. I didn't have time to check that. But that's how they describe him in the oh. news clipping at the end credits. Oh. And Neil told me, we all love Bishop, despite the fact he's the only true murderer from the cast. Is is he? Yeah, because he killed the, his brother. And I mean, suicide, they he chose the break to kill line. their... Yeah, you yeah know, but they then, chose to kill themselves. But then wasn't it hinted also that... Uh, that um, what's his name? Sebastian Maurice. Oh, that's Derek that's Cartwright. That. Yeah, Derek, that, Cartwright. That Derek ran over his wife, right? Well, but that's a rumor. Yeah, right. So Bishop's the only one who was really, really hands-on in. So, the, so then that, that means that uh, Nicholas Vince's character didn't didn't, you know, make his 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 uh, maybe he manipulated like him into, into killing, killing himself. himself. Yeah, I think personal. That's what Frank says before yeah. he stabs Julia. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a coincidence. Yeah, the blood spatter on top of Gemma Gordon's forehead makes it look like she's the one who got hit. And, and the look on her face looks like she's about to go unconscious, but she's really just yep. shocked about yep. what she did. Yep. And do you think that this is enough to kill him or is he just getting knocked out? I well, guess it if, if she caught him, if she caught him with the corner there, because it looks yeah. like it has a marble yeah, base. Yeah. yeah, you could, you could definitely. That's blunt force trauma. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I remember, I remember the first time I saw this, and he said, "Clever girl." The first thing I said was, "Gabby was a raptor." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Clever girl. What yeah. a twist. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. I just dropped something. Oh. <laughs> I just dropped my glass of whiskey. On a bass drum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the nurse just, uh, you know, lights up a cigarette, and it's like, oh, this is all a charade. I yeah. think this is a really good moment where you see, like, oh, wait, he's not dying. He's yeah. just... And even her expression. Her yeah, her expression changes completely. She's not yeah. bored anymore. She's yeah. looking straight at the camera. Yeah. She's actually his secretary. Um, oh, okay. No spoilers for episode three. Never mind. It's okay. That's on IMDb. You, you can say that. Oh, no. oh, you read through the IMDb of it? I, I, I looked at the cast list, and that's as far as I got. Well, by the time we get to, to the next one, you'll have seen it, so... Yeah, five yeah. more days. <laughs> I wish Ken was my grandfather. That'd be awesome. What'd you say? <laughs> I wish Ken Cranham was my grandfather. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like he's such a, a cool guy to, like, you know, just sit down and hear some stories and talk about something yeah, and have right. a drink. Be a drink yeah. have like a, somebody to tell stories. You know he has a lot. He needs to change his uh, IMDb profile picture, though, because it's a terrible yeah. photo. Oh, I don't know really? if you, you're going to check that after this, but go ahead and check it. He's, like, completely shaved. He's got, like, kind of longish hair, and he's, like, sticking his chin back and looking, like, uh, from, you know, looking up with his eyes. And it's like, this is a horrible picture. Did, why would they go to all the trouble of knocking her out and then giving her a suitcase with all the money and then letting her leave just to kill her again? I mean, they well, can just I'm kill her sure right there she, in the room. She, I'm not sure she gets murdered. I mean, the the it cuts to credits. Well, but it makes an it makes an axe like hitting a person's sound at the end. I I may have an answer to that. Uh, Gary sent me a message that said that um, originally the sequel to this episode was supposed to be called The Hunt, and Gabby immediately gets killed at the beginning. Oh, huh. oh, there it is at the corner. The Hunt. So are they going to make that sequel? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. 
Uh, bummer. Because they now they're going in the direction of following the, the the story of this cult instead of just a direct sequel to this thing. But but talking about those graphics, um, I, I said this before, and you mentioned it on the interview. I would love to see the Beast interview. And I'm sure that he is is a collector of something really, really cute, you know, kind of like Umbridge with the cat plates behind her in Hogwarts. <laughs> and, and, and Jose actually had the best idea, Precious Moments figurines. You just know it's yeah. happening. Yep. Uh-oh. Yep. Internet <clears throat> troll linked to teenage suicide. So she yeah. had pride. Pride, yeah. 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 Of course, he, they could have made a case for any one, one of the other ones. It's like, oh, no, it's not pride. It was uh, jealousy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They were kind of a makeup of all of them. And yeah. I think that's why it was so fluid. Yeah. You know, that, that's why Gary said no matter who, what they guessed, you, you yeah. know, they, they, they all had each one of those sins. So, you know. Someone needs to crowdfund to give the beast his own clean shirt. I <laughs> yeah. know, right? Yeah. That poor, that poor blood-soaked wife beater. Yeah. And squelch. Yeah. Wet slicing. That's what my uh, subtitles say at the end. Wet slicing. Oh. And, of course, a lot slicing. of work in all these little clippings here. Oh, dang it. My Amazon Prime cut. Yeah, mine did, too. Uh, yeah, mine did, just... too. I hate when oh, they no, do that. Anguish over lover's death. I'm still here, guys. I hid oh, okay. that the next episode autoplay, oh, so I'm looking at it. Uh, yeah. Guilty. Rose Cavendish. I, I tried. Oh. I wasn't fast enough. Yeah. So it's just a, basically like all the clippings uh, w- depicting every single bad thing that these guys did. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Derek Cartwright. Stanley Rawlings, a very promising actor. Uh, he, he's been doing a great job in um, yeah. all the dark titties so far yeah it seems like it gets better every time although really good in in maybe uh, mrs wiltshire was he he was really awesome in that one and this end credits music is called stone down by immacular mm. no another hall nether hall nether hall oh okay and here are the credits. The host, Maximilian Benoit, Ken Cranham, Michael Bishop, Bruce Jones, Gabby Sanderson, Gemma Gordon, Jonathan Brooke Davis, our very own Simon Bamford. And go check out Simon Bamford fans on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sebastian Maurice, played by Nicholas Fins, Rose Cavendish, Barbie Wilde. Darnell Spence plays uh, Daniel Price. We and you have all the mass guests. Uh, Siobhan Kilmartin, mass Guest number six, directed by Christopher Griffiths, screenplay by Neil Morris and Gary Smart. So great job, guys. This was really, really good. So, yeah. uh, Lori, are there any other uh, tidbits that uh, you didn't get to share through the commentary um, that you'd like to share? Well, the original script was called The Inheritance, oh. and uh, it came uh, to Gary when he went to Fright Fest and thought, hey, we could do this. Um, let's see. <laughs> Daniel Price was written to be white. Oh. Um, but they were they were so impressed with his audition that he, it, it just went to him because oh, okay. um, he's he's fantastic in that role. Um, and of course they wanted to play to stereotypes and, and expectations <laughs> of people with reality TV and then just really twist the ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. I have. I have here that uh, the blood for this show is supplied by Robert Smith. Special <laughs> effects makeup limited. No connection okay. to the cure. Uh, we had Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jones's wig supplied by Andrew Whitehawk. So it seems like Bruce Jones is wearing a wig in this one. Oh. And he also and, wears a wig in other Dark Diddies episodes. And so. Gary told me that the wigs were made, um, that, that stylist actually worked on, on some of the Harry Potter movies and some other big movies as well. Oh, cool. And Stone Down is by Nether Hall. I think the album is called. Uh, I think I was I was mentioning the name of the album. Um, yep. And Cult Screenings UK. And it says at the end, Mrs. Wiltshire, a dark ditty story coming soon. Yeah. Little did I know that I was gonna gonna drop tears over that one. That was pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking. And we talked to a couple of. Yeah. Yep. And we talked a couple of episodes, a couple of episodes ago, ago about, about Finders, Finders Keepers, so that was cool. 
Yeah, yep. yeah, just really quick, like spoiler-free kind of stuff. And and uh, going back to talking about Simon Bamford, actually, we owe a lot to him. He was our very first interview on our podcast. That's right. Yeah, we, we were super nervous, and I I actually asked him some some really dumb questions that I had to edit out. <laughs> And he told us some really interesting tidbits about shooting Hellraiser, like the, the ducks in the pond outside of uh, Cricklewood. They were making noise, and uh, and then the next day, the ducks were all gone, and we had duck pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Jeff Portis actually told me an interesting story. I, I asked him, because there's a, there's a picture that Simon has shared of being dressed up as Butterball and kind of like spread eagle in the chair and i said was there anything under that costume he goes oh god i wasn't going to check uh two production assistants and a bunch of ducks went missing up there and i wasn't going to look let me see um oh another thing um gary said that uh, oliver smith actually came up with the line din din and you harp a little fucker (laughs) and barnabas and benoit are brothers Oh, okay. Wow. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm backing up here because, like I said, he gave me bullet points to last for three years here. (laughs) Um, uh, Barnabas and the butler at one point were two separate people, and Barnabas Benoit's lawyer was to appear on a separate video link. Um, oh, here's here's one. Uh, one ending had Julia slash Rose faking her death and coming back at the end to take off a latex mask to reveal, reveal herself to be Benoit. Uh, that's, oh, wow. That's, 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 that's probably what he was referring to in one cool. interview when, when, when Neil said, no, we're not having the Scooby-Doo thing. <laughs> um, and, and another had them all being connected as Benoit's illegitimate children, so he wanted them all dead so they couldn't get his money, and his last line is to leave all his money to a cat's home. Oh, oh when it was called the inheritance, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah, the cats and, home. and then they were they were picked off of the voter roll or something like that. That was the the um, the pretense for the why they were there. Yeah. Which is obviously not true. And he said the original script had guests in booths watching through two way mirrors in the actual mansion. Oh. So maybe maybe that's what he's referring to the seat at the table. Oh okay. Uh, I think that's all the ones that he said that are not spoilery. Okay, yeah. So that's really interesting because so this idea of this overarching story and the cult of the risen word they developed later and sort of uh, sort of retro uh, re- retroactively made the offer a part of all that. And I think it's really cool you got that poster right there next to you on the couch, and you have a T-shirt <laughs> saying how wonderful. How wonderfully stereotypical of you. Which is a line from what we just saw. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's great. Oh, I I have a whole Simon wardrobe. You know this. (laughs) Yeah. I know that. That's cool. So what characters have you cosplayed so far from the Dark Diddies? Uh, Well, the nurse. Mm -hmm. Um, I played one of the masked partygoers. Oh, wow. And uh, coming up, up, I also have some Dark Diddies uh, costumes uh, and also cult screenings. costumes i am going to be special guest star hattie sims from the fright night documentary the that little trailer thing yes Uh, of course i i I feel that hattie will be a very challenging character because you know she she fawns all over her crush and that's nothing like me not at all (laughs) Mm -mm. and uh and and also i have uh, a cosplay coming up of mrs wiltshire's junk mail i have a polar bear (laughs) outfit Oh, and I have a, I and have a, a pizza. I have a, a person like a slice of pizza and a big button that says "Adopt Me." <laughs> and then I have another one that I can't say because it's kind of a surprise for Simon. Okay. Oh sure. Don't yeah. don't Ooh, don't you get surprises. a lot of people asking you what are you supposed to be or what is this or what's this about? I'd... And they hear exactly what it's <laughs> okay. about. I am all about the ditties. All right. So you're uh, <laughs> you're uh, you're helping boost their uh, Amazon ratings. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. That's wonderful. So uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of these Dark Diddy's episodes uh, commentary tracks because uh, they're just going to be so fun. I'm going to have a hard time watching Mrs. Wiltshire again and talking over it just because it's such an engaging and uh, yeah. an emotional episode to watch. And I, it's going to be hard to talk over that. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. 
And, and also, I'm looking forward to this. Isn't a spoiler at all, but the, in the third episode, the the Vimeo link that they gave us, mm-hmm. the uh, it seemed like the the fidelity wasn't super high. So it'll be good to see it on the on HD on Amazon Prime because I think it's going to look a little better. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we'll have subtitles because <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of, of, of thick accents in the uh, third episode. It's it's kind of hard to understand what they're s- talking about sometimes. But, uh, man, I really love that third episode. You're going to have a fun time with that one, Lori. Oh, I have no doubt. It is really good. And I, so I kind of not... got, got a preview of uh, what Simon's voice is going to be like <laughs> for the fourth one. So uh, oh. brace yourselves. Wow. You got it. The got it. And of course, this uh, first episode, I have to mention, it was in the memory of Don Kalfa, who was uh, very good friends with uh, Gary Smart. Oh. Um, and I remember when Don Kalfa passed away in 2016, uh, uh, Gary Smart was pretty demolished about that. He was devastated. And uh, and this was dedicated to the memory of Don Kalfa. He plays the mortician in uh, Return of the Living Dead. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the guy who. Uh, with the pants. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. So, pretty amazing episode. Thanks, guys, for joining yeah. us and uh, and doing this commentary track. And it was great to talk to you again, Lori. It's always yeah. a fun time when you're around. Uh, I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, I love it you, too. It was great to have you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. All right. And this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com where we have news, features, reviews, and links to all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts and every other place you can find podcasts. Clive Barker Podcast or BarkerCast is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.